Hello. Yeah, this head ball coach. He ran a what? Hey, I told you he could really go. Everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Click Clack Report. I am Aaron Weiss, uh, as always, uh, hosting this show alongside one of my best friends, my best buddy in the whole wide world. Jeff, how are you, my friend? Doing super. Got that the is... grind coming for signing day. Got Getting the... busy. Let's get busy. Getting busy. Getting some good stuff. Who's been your favorite recruit so far that you've been getting, getting caught up with lately? <clears throat> well, I did go to see Brandon McElwain, so he's probably my favorite right now. He, he was an impressive kid. Is Brandon's like who's who doesn't like Brandon McElwain right now? Uh, it's everybody's favorite. Probably a crazy person or a dumb person. A crazy like person him. or a dumb person. Maybe would probably a, not like him. Crazy and dumb. You can't you can't trust people like that. <laughs> not at all. But he really was can. impressive kid. Cool dad. Rowdy Rowdy McElwain. <laughs> <laughs> Hung out oh, there a good bit too. He was a good dude. I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble. I had a good time. I love a good. Re- I love when recruiting's parents are cool. When oh, yeah. It's like whenever they like whenever they get the system, <clears throat> when they're hyped on their kid for the right reasons. For the right reasons. For the right reasons. Yeah. Because I mean, even <clears throat> and I've said this like at a much lower level that I played at. When you see like a dad who's way too into it, when like there isn't even a sniff of the next level for that kid, like that's weird. You know? Yeah, like, it's really pump, really pump weird. the brakes. Pump the brakes. It's like, look, we get it. You're a big deal in a small town, a small school, or something like that. Don't just not make this any bigger than it has to be. And then you see a kid with like actual next level potential, not not just potential, but just like talent at two positions, at two schools. I mean, or uh, sports. There we go, third time. Third time. Um, and then that's just chill, just chill, dude. Got to appreciate it. Got to appreciate it. Tell you why I always appreciate some good football. Are you ready for some football? <laughs> good yeah. lord. That's for dang sure. Football. And we got more of it coming on the way. I know. I know. Super Bowl is already around the corner here. It's going to be come and gone probably by the time you listen to this podcast, honestly, depending on how fast we edit it. We're going for a quick turnaround. It is signing day, so who knows? We just had the Pro Bowl pass us, but who really cares about that? Senior Bowl happened, which was awesome. Our J-Rail. boy, our boy J Rel, got uh, three catches, about 40 something odd yards. Had a good game for him out there, and more importantly, had some really great practices in the week leading up to it. Real, real, real pretty dangles. I saw a couple of really hot yeah. vines right there too, man. Hot vines. Some big jumps, big Ooh. stretches. He's got, he's got the, he's got the measurables, man. He does. He's got the athleticism. But with more football coming on the way, it's going to take the form of, of course, you got your Canadian Football League, you got your Arena Football League, and now a new league has just come about that I guarantee you a lot of Gamecock fans are going to be really excited about: Major League Football. Why is it taking this many years to get Major League and football on the same page? Oddly enough, Major League, like. Major League Baseball used to own the rights really hardcore to a lot of it. Like they, uh, they actually sued a wrestling company, Major League Wrestling, over that too. Uh, and I remember have when fun, I'm sure. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, right? And then when the wrestler, independent wrestler uh, Jeff Jarrett, he had a wrestling move that was called uh, Big League SWAT, I think, or Major League SWAT, and uh, they they contacted him individually. They said he couldn't use it anymore. Couldn't put on T-shirts. That's that's a little much. That's what I'm saying. Talk about owning two words. It's for real. Like, get a life. It's not like you said Major League Baseball SWAT. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Then, yeah. Step in. And, you know, I think, I think I'd think i be okay, though, if they went after Major League Soccer. Take them down a peg. That's what I was just about to bring up, too. <laughs> of all the people that you could take down, that seems like a pretty easy target. Pretty easy target. Major League Soccer, what are they doing? I don't know. I've never I've met exactly. someone who's like, I'm a huge MLS fan. <laughs> Who is? Even soccer if, fans if are MLS fans. If someone's a soccer fans. fan, they're like, they watch... Soccer, Premier League, oh, in Europe, Europe or whatever. I love my Liverpool. Yeah. I love my Chelsea. No one's saying, I love the Columbus crew. Fast kicking, low scoring, and ties. <laughs> you bet. That's my favorite team. <laughs> no one's saying that. Nobody at all has ever said that phrase once in American history. Nope. Not one time. But Major League Football? Oh, we're going to be talking about it a lot. Got I'm, already, I'm just so that. jazzed for it. I feel like they know what... I feel like... I feel like they have a, a realistic expectation of what their league is going to be. They do. And, and they, I feel like a lot of minor leagues don't. They don't at all. And the, th- the great thing that they have done is on their site, I'll give credit to it, MLFBmedia.com, they actually have a graph comparing themselves to past leagues uh, that have either gone head-to-head with the NFL or been you know, an alternative to the NFL. 
and they do a direct comparison, basically checking off saying like, look, this is how we're the same for them. This is how we're different to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they always – they check off all this for themselves. Founded and managed by football experts, which we'll get into some of the coaches that – like there's some real names out there. Yeah. Real players that are coming to play from have played in the NFL, are still playing with them. Established teams in emerging unrepresented U.S. markets. We've talked about that a lot with um, kind of, you know, like uh, right here where we're at in Charleston. It's really a football dead zone almost. Absolutely. You know, you're four hours from Charlotte. You're how many, however many hours from Atlanta right now too. And it's like Plus and five. you don't really get any much of the TV market either. You get, you get Panthers games you get on Panthers national games television. Panthers games and, but, you know, your one CBS game and college, in the way of college football, no one cares about the set at all. Like, yeah. They're not selling out games. Charleston Southern, no one really cares about. Nope. It's just sort of an afterthought. Yeah. So, I mean, I think for what they're proposing right now, they are talking about doing a almost like a roadshow type league. I'm all on board with that. I'm 100% on board with that. All board! <laughs> all board! Because that way you don't have to worry about selling out the same, filling the same seats week after week, you know? And I think there's a real method to, we can dive right into it, there's, I think, seven different players with South Carolina credit on Team Hall, and that's if you count the infamous Jarvis Giles. Um, but, I mean, I feel like that's a real concerted effort. They're probably going to try to play a lot of games to where some South Carolina fans can make it. Absolutely. And they have a, a, a thing somewhere where they're anticipating to have ten to 15,000 people at every game. And if you if you plan things right, that's not a hard number to hit. It's not. No, that's, a, that's a realistic goal, and that's... That comes to, like, this makes me think of what I wish they would do for bowl games, and that is I wish more second- and third-tier bowl games were at stadiums that could only house ten or 15,000 because no one wants to see the Belk Bowl that we went to that with 15,000, you know, with probably, what, 30,000 empty seats? That top bowl, reasonably, that entire lower bowl could have been filled, but then the top bowl could have been entirely empty. Yeah, absolutely. It really could have been 100% just completely empty. And it's just... That's not – no one cares about that. And that exactly. was a pretty decent matchup. That was Mississippi State. Well, more importantly, State. that was important because with North Carolina State playing, it was basically like a home game for them. They treated it like a there home was, game. There was a treat. They did treat They gave them the whole video package. They had the big fancy intro. I had merchandise that had the Belk Bowl logo and the North Carolina State logo. I didn't find anything with the Mississippi State logo <laughs> on it. And even then, you're talking maybe 20,000, 25,000 people there. Yeah, maybe. 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 That's really generous, too. Yeah. Wilson came out for the Carrie Underwood concert. That was I'm great. sure. It was great. I ended up staying through the entire thing. Yeah, I'm sure you loved it. I got, I got the Snapchat. I loved it, bro. Yeah. Loved it. It was worth the trip. All right, but so with this league being formed now, all right, they're, they're really emphasizing the fact that they're not going to be you know, competing with the NFL. But at the same time, they're, not, they're talking about you know, how completing the dream of having a major league football career, a big-time football career. But they're not necessarily saying this is the minor leagues for football. They're saying that this is guys, a lot of guys getting second chances, and a lot of guys who just maybe are just, just never been even given a chance. And, you know, giving them a, an actual venue to continue to play football. Mm-hmm. You know, like baseball, there's an ungodly amount of minor. There's a, it's just the farm system for baseball. It goes everywhere, and it's know? really perfected. That's yeah. the science. You have multiple different leagues, multiple and, tiers, and it's, easily to move players between the leagues. And you know, I get it. See, football is a unique sport because it's so hard on the body, and you know, mm-hmm. you, it's it's tough, but and much fewer games, and, shorter and, season, and a shorter window of playing time. But you yeah. know, think about how many dudes who are pretty good at football just can't play. Like, just can't play because if, if you're not in the NFL, and, and if you don't go to CFL, which is a completely different set of rules, mm-hmm. you know, like what do you got? And they can only take so many imports in the CFL too. Yeah. You know, it's. It's just there needs to be a video because think about how many dudes are late bloomers. Think about how many people aren't even close to hitting the stride until they're a fifth year senior or something. And yeah. then and then yeah, they go they get on a training camp and then when you have 90, 90 people getting cut down to fifty three, it's just that's it's a it's a I think it's a broken system. Yeah, absolutely. And we've talked about this too, just string real quick, is I wish there was something I wish this could be eventually affiliated with the NFL. And it'll be great. And let's say Carolina Panthers they got their, they got ninety players. They got to cut down to fifty three. You can a lot 10, 10 people, twenty people. I don't know. Yeah. To the MLFB. Keep it absolutely, on. absolutely. And like, they bring up that one of the leagues they talk about comparing themselves to is the FXFL, which I'm not even. I have not. I admittedly have not kept up with it. But they haven't been doing a good job of well, keeping me up. I, I, mean, I meant to tell you this. Tell uh, me. I was purging the accounts I'm following on Twitter. Yeah. And I see the. <laughs> 
I, I, I wish I didn't unfollow it. It's the, it was like the Omaha... Nighthawks. I, no, no, that was the, that was the, U, that was the UFL um, team. Uh, well, someone bought... It said the, the bio for it. It was the Omaha, like... I think it's Mammoths, right? Or yeah, something? but this is like... It was like the Omaha Butt Babies. But, <laughs> but it was... The, it was the official Omaha Mammoths Twitter account. And it, the, the, the bio for it said, I purchased this for $7. I'd buy that for a dollar. Are you serious? So that means if the XFL, FXFL is going to continue, that, I'm pretty sure Omaha's not a team anymore. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm just pretty sure that FXFL's not a team, but, not uh, league anymore. Hey, Josh Freeman, yeah, NFL player, sure. came from there. Taj Boyd. Taj Boyd. Old chicken quesadilla himself. <laughs> Love that guy. Oh, it's the, the Twitter handle is Go Omaha Chubs. <laughs> Well, I mean, the actual handle is still Omaha Mammoths, but that's what it says. And then it says, bought the Mammoths Twitter handle for $7. And Great. the background is just steaks. Oh, look at those Omaha steaks. steaks. They're grilling. Yep. That's, uh, how do you buy it? How do you, who, who did he go to to buy that account for $7? It's got, still has 3,600 followers. It's, people are looking at it. People are still looking at it. The FXL still follows it. <laughs> God, so that's, that's, that's something. That's, that's something. Um, but basically, you know, but they came out and were very fervent about saying, this is the, the we want to be the minor league. We yeah. want to do this. Now, one of their biggest failures, I think, was only having four teams. This having is the biggest teams? minor league failures ever when you only have a, such a small amount In of teams. In NFL markets, too. In heavily saturated NFL markets. Boston. About- Boston had a team. New York, York has two teams. Why is New York <laughs> have two teams? <laughs> There was one team that didn't have any city. And yeah, just went it was to travel a lot of places, teams, right? Yeah, the Blackheads or something. It was what Black was? Tips. Black Tips, like uh, were, fish. Yeah, yeah, genius. genius. Blackheads is like is it? <laughs> <laughs> that would be regrettable. real smart. Real, real smart. That would be regrettable. <laughs> but you know, so but they have MFLFB now has eight teams. They're doing a non-adversarial approach to the NFL. They're not competing with the NFL schedule wise. Their locations. They say they mentioned this, not competing in locations with the NFL. Or Major League Baseball. That was interesting, too. Yeah. I think that's smart because if you're having a league that's going into the summer, you know, MLB, you know, league teams and stuff like that, there's so many games that if you're looking it's for, just, like, a day on the town, it's yeah, just, you just a, it's get a cheap thing ticket. to do. Yeah, it's, it's just, just a thing, thing to do. do. Get a $10 nosebleed and just go. Now you're saying <laughs> MLFB saying, hey, you need something to do? Come and see some of this. Come yeah. see some football. And I, oh, my God. I'd rather go. I'd rather pay $50 to see a football game. Then five dollars to see a baseball game. That, that that lasts five hours longer, and you just don't. There's just exactly. there's no way you know going to a baseball game. I and like I've I've never made any effort to watch baseball, and then I worked in baseball last season, and you know you said like I get the allure of just the ballpark. You know mm-hmm. it's just it's a, it's a place to go to drink cheap beer and just yeah relax totally. socialize totally. Football, let's get more of that. Yeah, you know it's just it's crazy how we're it's 2016 now, and we just. There's just nothing organized beyond the NFL. I know it's really, really strange. And it's bit, like, why isn't the NFL invested more in this? Right? It's just, I feel like there's it's just so much untapped potential. And I keep every and like, I keep wanting one of these to succeed. Yeah. <laughs> one of these minor league football. I'm, systems da- I'm to so succeed. I want it so bad. <laughs> I want it so bad. So bad. And, and I feel like a lot of people want it too. It's just you, you got to work to get them out there. You, you're, you're pulling people out of their comfort zone. Everyone's so used to. Okay, I only pay attention to football from August to January. Yeah. And then it's not football season anymore. And then, but you know, I mean, rivals.com. Recruiting, football recruiting is year round. They're like, as good as Carolina is at basketball right now yeah. and baseball year in, year out, our subscribers don't really care about that. They're overwhelmingly into football and football recruiting no matter the time of year. And you have spring practice, which kind of. That'll hold you, and then summer, you just got to hear it'll about it. It'll wet your whistle. It'll yeah, wet your whistle. It'll your whistle, and then summer is when you got to hear about workouts and just mm-hmm. you're getting, you're ready for football. You're getting ready. And then your hands. back in the glory days, July, NCAA football comes out, and that's when it starts. Boom. But hopefully soon we'll be living in that, that world again. Hopefully that, that but, game series. But, you know, bad. if you do it right, people are starved for football. You just, I think you have to work a little extra hard, harder to get people to take the chance on. And so much of it too is is the familiarity aspect, you know, both in terms of, you know, the teams and just like what's being presented to you, but also the players as well. Like the reason why I watched more Canadian football I did last year than ever before was because we knew a few players who were playing for the Montreal Alouettes. And Tori was, Gurley was there, Rakeem Cato was playing for them. Yep. I mean, there there was guys who we remembered, we loved them in college, and we got to see them actually playing 
in fo- playing and that, football. And that's another thing too is think about how many great college players just don't translate to the NFL, but they're still good football players. Yeah, exactly. Give them a home. And what we talked about this right before we started recording is all these different colleges that we've never heard of with these guys who are being drafted from. I mean, Southern Connecticut State. You get uh, Ottawa University and Ottawa. What's the difference between Ottawa and Ottawa University? I don't know. Framingham State. Oh, uh, Cheetah Baptist. Like these are not available. What these guys are coming straight from high school. Yeah, and they're going. To yeah, we, there's <laughs> one kid who's listed as high school. He's listed as high school. We got a UNC Charlotte in there. Good for them. That's a fresh program. Yeah, good for them. Carson Newman. Look, you like you like seeing this kind of stuff. Yeah. So that's great too to know that there's the guys who are having success at different kinds of colleges. And with it's it's one of the things where it can translate over. Depending, you know, on the, you know, what's how it's being presented, especially for offensive players. Mm-hmm. For offensive guys, I feel like a wide receiver could be found, good found, can be found anywhere. Yeah, a good, like just not not great, yeah. but a good one can be found at any level. And for this, it puts a, a prime emphasis on athleticism. Exactly, and athletes can come from anywhere. Yeah. You get better too. You could become more athletic. We're also talking about think about how many dudes are just late bloomers. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's just it gives them a venue to get some film on them. Absolutely. So let's give the full rundown of South Carolina guys. These are guys who went to South Carolina because there were some uh, – I saw a couple of Clemmy players in there as well. Guys who went to South Carolina who are now in this league. Um, and all but one are all on a single team uh, coached by Galen Hall, who we'll get into a little bit later here. Uh, but the biggest player drafted – drafted uh, a part of the franchise draft because the MLFB – did three different kinds of drafts. Yeah, interesting, but I'm, I'm for it. I'm not against it. Yeah, I think it's good to have a draft where you draft a guy and say that he is a franchise player. Yeah. And the franchise player for Galen Hall's team is Steven Garcia. And boy, do we love Stevie G. We love, love Stevie G. Have never stopped loving Never stopped Stevie loving G. Him. Always. I love you, Paul. I love you, Cleaner. <laughs> love I'm our boy. Loving the pieces. And he, you know... He is drafted within a couple picks of Dan LaFever with both CFL and NFL real experience. Real experience. Yeah. Game yeah. playing experience. I mean, that says something. Absolutely. And then my mom's favorite player in the world, Victor Hampton, coming He's in playing. round four. Round four, huge. Round 11, Travian Robertson. With NF- NFL experience. Again, NFL host, experience. A host of NFL experience. Real NFL experience. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Nunn, drafted in round 27. Uh, the hotly contested Jarvis Giles. Hotly contested. <laughs> the butt of just a lot of jokes. But he's listed as South Carolina. He's credited. I think that's hilarious. He's you know, credited. He did have a hundred yard game against Florida Atlanta. It happened. Yeah. It happened one time. Uh, Terrence Campbell drafted in round thirty two. Nice fella. Nice fella. J T. Surratt drafted mm. in round forty. Um, I don't believe. I think he might. I think I might have seen his name on a practice squad once. Yeah. He, no. He he did the training camp thing. He did just, training camp. Just thing. couldn't stick yeah. anywhere. And then the, uh, let's see, odd man out then is your boy, not your boy, but facetiously your boy, facetiously. Joey Scriver Howard. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just think is not even, who wasn't, I didn't, I just didn't think he was that good of a kicker. Like, I, feel like I was Car- never impressed. I feel like Carolina's had better kickers than him recently and, and punters. Mm-hmm. So I thought, I thought it was odd that his name was there. Like Adam Yates, I remember he had some time with, uh, with the Jaguars, like not just for training. That's camp. right. And I was just like, where's that guy's name? <laughs> I feel like he's pretty prime to be in, in this. Kickers discussion. are kickers are everywhere. They are so everywhere. many kickers are around, just hanging out, just guys who can you know make three three out of four kicks every time. I'll just take it seventy five percent. I'll take yeah. that absolutely. It's it's a, it's it's crazy. But Joey is the the odd man out here. He is not going to be on that team coached by Galen Hall. I mean, we can hold out hope for a trade. <laughs> Who's the guy? Who, you know who I really see here? I like to see if, if our boy Jimmy Legree could get work in this league. Well, he's he's an NFL. He's, he's on an NFL. He's on, he's on a practice squad right now. Yeah, but yeah. He's, he's getting that NFL. I know. Chat. That's why I hope so. I hope so. he keeps getting that NFL. Chat. But if he doesn't, then I hope to see him. And I Vic, was looking him and Vic next to each other again. That's I was looking for some more people like that though. Yeah, Carolina. I feel like Carolina's had some really good players who just didn't stick in the NFL. Like I think Chaz Sutton's te- technically like on IR somewhere. But I feel like he would be primed for this league. Wesley though. Saunders, is, I think, is a free agent at the moment. Wesley Saunders would be I, – I could have seen Wesley Saunders being a top four or five round pick in this. Yeah. Like, he, he keeps posting it out. Give, him, give the man credit. <laughs> he, he'll tweet, like, highlights from himself in practice and stuff. Uh, and he just tags NFL teams. And, you know, and it would be like – Put yourself out there. And I remember what, it was him doing a blocking drill. He's like, I could even be your franchise left tackle. <laughs> I was like, I, I love it. I love the tenacity of just, and that's the thing though. It's like, you remember that guy 
Um, it got viral a little bit. The guy who's staying outside who the Houston, super, Texas? super ripped with just a we'll catch, we'll run routes for food. Yeah. Like that's what this league. And he be got about. work. He got signed. Yeah, seventeen. It worked. And you gotta love. Like there's just so many dudes who are just they need they need some kind of venue to play. They need an outlet. They need mm-hmm. to keep playing because that's that's what happens to so many of these guys is that if your career's over at, at twenty three, the yeah. career that you plan for life is over at age twenty three. That screws up with you. In such a massive way. Like, I know how it was for me just graduating from college at 23 and not and like not having an immediate job or whatever. Yeah. It screws with you the biggest way. And, you know, you talk to so many college graduates. They talk about those first couple of years. You know, I, well, my friend referred to it as, like, the crying years where it's just you, just you just feel so lost. You feel so empty. And to have – to lose that experience in college plus then losing your job, your football, your career and being told – that you're not good enough, ultimately. After everything you've done, ultimately going to be told not good enough. Or that's if you're, killer. Yeah. And like, that's got to be extra hard for, like, let's say you're a kid that went to Alabama and played pretty well. Yeah. And you're, and you're you know, you think it's a certainty I'm going to be an NFL player, and it just doesn't happen. And you're like, you know, it's not all on these kids' fault either. It's like they're told, but like, this is what you're going to do. Yeah. And when it doesn't happen, it's a, it's a real tough thing to cope with. But then, like, the flip side of that is, like you said, you're out of work at 23. And this is a different sport, but like, it, you don't really have. I mean, let's be honest. For the most part, most of these guys don't really have the mind to go into any kind of specialized job or anything that's really going to pay. Very well, high. It, it you know, playing playing this in college, it takes so much of your time. That's why most of them get really basic exactly. general studies degrees. Is just because you got a lot of work to do. Yeah, I mean, they got a lot of lots of balance. But like, what I was going to say is, it's a different sport. But with hockey, there's so much data that like really good players. It's overwhelming that their peak is twenty seven to thirty. It's crazy. It's it's that and think about it. I am twenty eight now. I'm mm-hmm. about to be twenty eight and like it's not it's not has nothing like let's I don't have any physical ability. I'm just saying that like you become so much more aware of what your limitations are mm-hmm. the older you get and you re- you can refine what makes you good. And same it's the same with the NFL though. Like you get I think with the NFL you get a lot more young people and then I feel like when you see a lot of people who are pro bowlers in their first two years in the NFL, yeah. they flame out. Yeah. And but you see a lot more consistency from those people who played ten years. Their best football is twenty. It's probably let's say football. Let's say twenty five to twenty seven or something. Like that's still people are out of football way before that. Yeah. And they have if you don't have game situations practice every single day, you don't get better. Exactly. And like they say, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. Exactly. And you know it's so hard for these guys to, to have that kind of balance. And, you know, to kind of keep pursuing things on their own, mm-hmm. you know, it's really, I mean, I would say it's near impossible really to pursue yeah. things on your own unless you're, unless you're like, you know, somebody, unless you're like Wesley Saunders who keeps working out on his own time, yeah. keeps filling himself and keeps trying to put him out there yeah. anyway, he's yeah. necessary. And that's another reason why I can't, maybe he thought he was above this and wanted to, to stick, keep, keep with the NFL stuff. I don't know. I'll do it without you. <laughs> I don't need you or anybody else. I'm going to make it on my own. <laughs> Because they did have a pro day, and I just don't think he could have gone to the pro day and not been drafted in the top 60 rounds. Yeah. Because he's impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Know? So, who knows? But all these guys, for the most part, like, as we said, Joey Scribner, how being the ex- uh, exception, are going to be playing on a team that's going to be coached by a guy named Galen Hall. Now, Galen Hall, for any of those who might be familiar, um, or if that name sounds familiar at all, he was the head coach at Florida from 84 to 89. Uh, he's been a head coach at a bunch of different minor league football <laughs> places, which is, is kind of crazy. He was the uh, offensive coordinator at Oklahoma from 73 to 83, offensive coordinator at Penn State from 04 to 11. Uh, but the, his minor league credentials here are absolutely amazing. First, uh, Orlando Thunder uh, as the offensive coordinator for, I believe that was the, let's see, was that the Arena League? No, that's the World League team. Um, for That's the World League of American Football. Very, very Love catchy, it. catchy name. Uh, he was the head coach over there in 92, uh, then went to the Charlotte Rage of the Arena Football League, um, which was, this was actually a team that was preceded the Carolina Panthers. It was back in 94. They played from 92 to 96, and that's that's kind of interesting. Like, yeah. a team that's kind of just fades to obscurity. Yeah. But he led them to uh, to uh, the playoffs there. Uh, as a head coach of the Rain Fire from 95 to 2000, led them to some good things in NFL Europe. Uh, was the head coach of the Orlando Rage in the XFL and led them to the championship game uh, as well back in 01 for the lone XFL season. Dude, dude, no one else can say that. This is something like, it's a weird, 
it's a weird resume to have, but like it's this great. is the kind of resume yeah. exactly for this kind of league. Perfect for somebody who has had literally at this point now uh, fifty years of coaching experience. Fifty years, five decades. That's five zero. Fifty years of of coaching experience, but really doesn't have much really to maybe offer the NFL anymore, or is mm-hmm. kind of too old to maybe be uh, considered for positions. Well, in the, in the, in the college games, all young guys and recruiting now. Yeah. You know? So this is perfect. Exactly. This and, is and, absolutely. And it's perfect. in his wheelhouse. I'm, you're talking about a guy who is a habitual minor league coach. Mm-hmm. That's not nothing. Not nothing, man. I mean, he, the guys get the guy paid. gets work. Guy, guys guy get gets paid. paid. Guy gets work. He was actually uh, he was a quarterback at Penn State back from fifty nine to sixty one, and then uh, played a couple of years in the NFL uh, for the Redskins and the Jets. Um, I, I mean, I'm excited the prospect of an offensive minded head coach now getting to work with Steve with Stevie G. G, our boy. I'm pumped. I'm excited. Uh, I mean, you know, we could. I, it is interesting. I think that he was the offensive coordinator. Um, when the whole thing with Sandusky went down back prime, at Penn State, prime Sandusky years. Prime Sandusky, kind of scary. He was he was not retained by Bill O'Brien. That's that's how that went down. Well, it's a life of hard knocks. Hard knocks. You know what are you going to do? Um, but yeah, Galen Hall. He's going to be the head coach of that team. There have those guys, and I, really not much else has been revealed about the league in terms of how the jerseys are going to look, how it's actually going to work in terms of the traveling. In terms of their schedules Very and whatnot, and the, I feel like they have a lot of unprecedented. They have a lot of potential to really for fan immersion too. Mm-hmm. With, I mean, they they for a minimal investment, they could have a film crew with every team and have like a twenty four seven style show, Absolutely. a hard knock style show on their season. Just have it have it as a web as series. A promotional Re- release it on your website. On their website, and I guarantee you, something like that could could gain traction. And what's beautiful about where we're at now. Is that you for minimal monetary investment? The resources are there to produce amazing video content. Yeah. With where cameras are at now, you can and you can just rent them. Like, I don't know if they're going to do that. And you brought up jerseys. I'm really cautiously optimistic about the jerseys. I'm hoping that they don't do the minor league thing and make them look like yeah. FXFL. For its faults, had some great uniforms. Really for, great for uniforms. all four of its teams. Really nice logo work for them too. Yeah. I think real, 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 real unified. professional, real Unifi- professional, and unified. unified for yes. the, like, I think they should all be because like with some minor leagues, especially in hockey, for better or for worse, they unify the logo look. Yeah. And with a with like uh, the OHL, it's bad because they're all like cartoony logos. But <laughs> like some like the AHL, they all have similar looks, mm. and it's a good thing. Yeah, and I'm hoping that we can get, and you know, I like that classic. The classic look is sort of the cool thing right now, and I'm hoping we'll get some of that in there too. Because we were just talking about this earlier too. The Pro Bowl jerseys mm-hmm. for those are really good looking jerseys. Good, and you know, I feel like especially with like these Under Armour games for high school yeah. high schoolers now, it's like let's make jerseys as loud and ugly as possible. Thank God, Under Armour is decreasing in popularity. Uh, Under, it's because they're neon. The whole neon they're, well, they're thing trying, is awful. They're trying to be like Nike instead of being their own thing. And it's, and it's awful. And it's just like, <laughs> Nike can get away with some stuff, but they do plenty of ugly crap too with like Oregon's uniforms. And it's Absolutely. just like stick to just trying to look good <laughs> just, just, instead you know, of trying to look crazy. Just be competent. You yeah. Know? Um, as far as the other head coaches go, uh, really the only big name I recognize is Dave Campo. Uh, who was, I believe, was the head coach of the Cowboys for a brief spell. Yeah, it's, I, I, he was the only name I recognized. Senior advisor, I just found this on the website, senior advisor Herman Edwards. And quarterback advisor Mark Bolger. Oh, that's huge. I forgot yeah. about that. Mark Bolger working for him now, too. Bolger. Bolger? I don't know. Yeah, he's the head coach of, I think, the first year, they, like one of the first years they did hard knocks, like the second year, because the first year was the Ravens. It was the Dave Campo Dallas Cowboys. That was when they had Dat Nguyen. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, like, Zach Thomas. Oh. I'm pretty sure fun. that was real. But, yeah, I remember Dave Campo. go back and do a watch on that. Oh, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's, a, that's a good name to have. Yeah. And, I mean, they definitely, they have support. So they have a two-year television contract right now with American Sports Network. Now, I'm um, pretty sure that is Magic Johnson's network. It, it may be. I'm trying. It's owned by uh, the Sinclair Broadcasting Group. Um, they do. I know. I have seen a couple of uh, actually American uh, American Athletic Conference games on there for, back in, uh, during the college football season. They do high school football. They do multiple sports for NCAA Division One, minor league uh, baseball. Uh, they do. They do cover Major League Soccer, uh, Real Salt Lake. 
Um, Arizona Bowl. <laughs> you get your pro racing flat track dance leagues. Uh, you know, so it gets. They are a rising yeah. uh, uh, sports network. Uh, so it's not so nothing, saying. you know. It's definitely I, not I nothing. Think, I think the biggest thing they could ever do, though, is try to. Get, it's it's all about streaming nowadays. Yeah. And they need their games to be easily accessible via the interwebs. Absolutely. And the one thing that, if they are going to have a streaming, though, they still need to have high quality presentation because mm-hmm. that's the biggest difference between. And that's e- the, that's easy, more easily obtainable. Than absolutely. Because I like I worked, I worked so. some high school games this year. But the FXFL when we were watching, it, I mean, it was, it was still weird. very bare. And then and then you see like when it's a, when it's a pay per view game, like let's say for Carolina, they're playing Coastal. Mm-hmm. Like when I was doing highlights for the 2013 season, and then there's that Coastal game. It's like they can't even get a score bug that looks like it's from this century. <laughs> it's bizarre. And but like I worked, I worked a Pendleton High School football game this year, and just for that package, like that, it's, it was just for like the upstate and some of North Carolina. Unreal production quality. Yeah. And it's just like if a high school game can acquire that for a budget, like I don't know what the money was, but I know this wasn't like the top dog in the world, but. This league should be able to acquire something. Absolutely, like that. absolutely. And like it, that's the thing too with keeping fans on. If you make the fans believe or have the perception that you are a very well run, very well presented uh, organization, that you're not just a you know a one you know, just a one season and done kind of league. If you can keep up that presentation and keep the fans interested like that, because that is so important. Yeah. People don't want to support something that doesn't seem like they even care about themselves. It just goes down to marketing and advertising. If you're mm-hmm. at the grocery store, and that's why the name brand cereals are more expensive and everyone buys them, and then you got the stuff that might be the same, but it's in a bag, and a lot of people, even though it's the same and it's half the price, a lot of people overlook it. Or it's, they just try to take the name that's of the, something else. Like, yeah, like, Coco like, Roos. <laughs> what is a Coco Roo? <laughs> Checkmate. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't get it, but that's it's just sure, it's a subconscious thing of like, if you want someone who's not a football fan to see that and be like, oh, is this an NFL game? Like that, you want that kind of you just you just want that. Yeah, absolutely. For, for the average person, that's the hard. That's what everyone tries to sell is the average person and not the hardcore fan. But I feel like this is a special case where you need you need to service your hardcore fans first, and then like I said, these things are attainable now. Absolutely for. for if you if you plan it out right, absolutely. They have a very a good looking website. I think it's great looking website. Mm-hmm. A lot they of good information on there too. Easy to access information. Yeah, lots of it. Like if you want to know something, the website they really does charts, tell you everything. You know, they have charts. a lot. They have a lot of <laughs> charts instead of just where they could. Where a lot of other people might just have big blocks of text. They chose to go the the uh, visual aid route, and it's very important. I yes. think too for that. They do have they have a, one of their biggest sponsors is Netgear. Uh, their official helmet is uh, made by Riddell, and they are a part of a publicly traded company, which I do think is extremely interesting and gives me a lot more confidence and hope because – From the business pub- side. From yeah. the business side, I think, because if you're publicly traded, there's money coming around. Mm-hmm. The money's around, and, and it that, means that goes into advertisers increase. too. Exactly. And advertisers are making money. Exactly. And that's oh, – yeah, I mean there's a lot to like about it. You just hope that it – the on-field product is going to be what you hope it is. Yeah, they have a Facebook page, an Instagram, YouTube. They have all the essential stuff on there. And on their Twitter, we'll give them props for this too. They were using their hashtag is hashtag MLFB, and for like five picks in the second round of their draft, they were accidentally using the hashtag MFLB, and they they, they didn't delete tweets. Nope. They called themselves out on it. And they're like, well, how about said, some with the right hashtag? Let's try it again. They yeah. said, let's try it again. Like, I just they dig that. I don't know. I feel like everyone. Like feels like you got to be perfect or like real. Everything's got to be clean and just, yeah. I feel like a lot of other organizations might have panicked, but okay, hurry up and delete those tweets yeah. and pretend they didn't happen. I like to know that it's human beings working on this thing at the same and time, admitting mistakes, a- admitting mistakes, and still keeping things professional to yeah. a certain degree. You don't absolutely. have absolutely, yeah, absolutely. They're doing a good, they're doing a real solid job. I really like what they got going on. I'm really oh here we go. So they're going to announce the franchise cities. Uh, it looks like soon, Ooh. hopefully. So we'll have to keep an eye out for that. There's some, um, there's some scuttlebutt that Team Hall is going to be Orlando. I can see that. Mm. He does, uh, as we as we mentioned, Galen Hall does have roots in Orlando. Yeah, Stevie G's a Florida guy, and there's a lot of Florida guys on Team Hall too. There you go. And I think I think there's like a real concerted effort to going back to what we we're talking about of, you know, using that college fandom connection for your base because yeah. it's the Southeast especially is college football territory. Absolutely. I, I think the Panthers and the Falcons play a backseat to Carolina. Georgia, mm-hmm. Clemson, Georgia, not Georgia Tech, but you know, like especially SEC. You know, yeah. like 
That ran supreme. And being in Central Florida ha- as the base, anyways. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if that, it, that's, that's, in, that's in that pocket. You got Gainesville's a little further away. Exactly. You know, it's and it's a college football state. Yeah, absolutely. Really. I With mean, three NFL teams. Oh wait, do they have two now? It's, it's Miami it's, and. It's just okay. Miami and Tampa. And yeah, Miami and Ja That's right. <laughs> three so NFL three. teams, and it's yeah. still a college football state. Still a college football yeah. state. <laughs> that's, because, that's because high school football in Florida is arguably the best in the country. Gotta love it. Yeah, man. and. I mean, I think that definitely – because then, you know, these kids, like, the way they announced Steven Garcia going to the Tampa Bay Storm was Jefferson High standout. Like, that's another thing. You got these – like, to the extra level, you got these kids from your high school, these all out to these high school games. Yeah. They're going to be like, oh, that kid plays in this league now. I'm going to go to that game. My one thing is that I really do hope they keep up in terms of trying to get – not just not us, like, more players because I think that it's great. They have a, they're actually their national draft is going on as we were recording this. They are currently I think in round close to round seventy something. So and with eight teams spread across that, you know, eight per round, it's that's pretty good. I yeah. mean, that's a lot of players coming in. That's a lot of you know investment into a lot of players, and those guys get get paid. If they can afford to pay all those guys still, I think this just can keep going. Absolutely, and it's really. And then, you know, you and I both, we love us some minor league football. Mm. Or love us some alternative football. We love any kind alternative of football. Alternative football, I like that. Alternative football, yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, we, we, we really dig it. We want to support it. And, you know, my biggest hope is that, indeed, it does stick around for a long time. It does – it's accessible to us I think, at some I point. I think – I wish when things like this happened, it was like – I wish they could open up with like a three-year contract. Yeah. Um, I think three years would be a good time to learn from your your mistakes, season one, because mm-hmm. you have to make mistakes. Like absolutely, you you have to figure out. What, oh man, round sixty eight, former South Carolina wide receiver Lamar Scruggs drafted to team Kirksey, round sixty eight, North Carolina Central. Boom. Also known as when South Carolina lost to Kentucky in two thousand ten, a week after beating Alabama, they chose to throw a fade to Lamar Scruggs, not to Alshon Jeffrey. <laughs> to lose the game, so I was in that. I was in that same corner of the end zone when that happened. Oh my god! So just saw that name. Pretty psyched. Pretty great. Good for him. though. Good for him. Lamar Scruggs, good guy. He's getting around. He'll he'll play against the actual other actual South yeah. Carolina players. I think it's hilarious though that Jarvis Giles gets. He only played one season with Carolina. Gets the South Carolina for his name, and Lamar Scruggs was there for at least two or three years. <laughs> And he gets and he got he a few stats. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're we're really excited about about Major League Football. Yeah, we wanted to just, we wanted to bring that and up out there. I, I, you know, and not just us. Although I'd say I've been one of the large advocates for the MLFB on the Gamecock Central forums. <laughs> um, you know, with that many South Carolina players attached, that's a fan base that's going to at least huge. take notice. Yeah, especially mo- especially so many recent South Carolina players. It too. would be. I tell you what would be really cool is if they played at least they played a game. They played a game in South Carolina. Whether it's I, I feel like Williams Bryce is too big of a stadium for it to be fun. But you know, one of these smaller yeah. schools go to Wofford. Go to go to Citadel. Citadel yeah. is perfect. Charleston. Really. I'm so glad they're going to start doing a bowl bowl like the Medal of Honor Bowl is going to be an actual bowl game at the Citadel because that's a great venue for a bowl game. Like like I was saying earlier. Smaller stadium, mm-hmm. pack that out. They got good, great presentations. A great spots in downtown. Um, it's good. I'm, that would be a great spot for a week. Let's say week one game. Let's go right yeah. out the gate. Let's go know? right out the gate. I'll do Bring that. them on in. Heart of downtown Charleston. You get the tourists coming in too. Yep. They have a good time. It's a great spot. I think it's a great spot. Mm-hmm. Great that, spot. That'd be a great like they do those those big basketball classic tournaments. Like they do the one. In, they'll do the one in Charleston. You. Uh, they got opportunities. Let's, they got, see, let's see if they do it. They got opportunities. Um, somebody who's pretty run out of opportunities at this point, Maddie Mock. To do a quick, to do an easy transition because that was good, look. I know so <laughs> funny. I just remember when I when I saw that it was trending, and then I watched. I, I was just it was like eight in the morning. I just got done playing hockey, and I saw this, and he's everything about it. He's, it's everything you wanted from and, a Maddie Mock and doing the, cocaine video. The, the link that I. That I clicked on was, well, it was something to the effect of Matty Mock missing rails of coke just like his receivers. And we've said this, and I think more people need to hear it. Matty Mock is nothing but a less talented, less likable Steven he's Garcia. He's never. A, he's not good. No, he's not good. He's never been good, really. I mean, he was a Mister Football for Ohio High School. That's about it. <laughs> Good, congrats, whatever. 
And then, he's an habitual fifty percent completion rate. He's a habit is <laughs> habitually poor completion rate, habitual cocaine user. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, just everyone wants to, if you want to complain about Steven Garcia, I, I get that he's controversial and not everyone's on team Stevie G. The dude could throw the ball. The dude played big in some big games. And yeah, he had some clunkers. Sure. But he had more good games than clunkers. And at the highest stage in college football. And Matty Mock wishes he was Steven Garcia. Absolutely. That hair. Absolutely. He didn't have that hair from the start. No, he did not. He was like, Steven Garcia, I want to be like this guy, but I'm just not as good and not nearly as many people like me. It's, it's true. If not you nearly. If you had a battle royale between Steam, teams, all the people of Team Stevie G versus Team Matty Mock, it would be a, it'd just be overrun. It'd be pathetic. At yeah. this point, there is nobody on there Team is, Matty Mock. I would love, I'd love it if there was a Matty Mock mob. If it was like <laughs> Mock mob. Who was like real defensive of him. It was like, I didn't even see no coke from that rail go up his nose. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind his giant, ah, that he did. I can't, I can't wait to play that <laughs> Uh, but the good news, though, is that him being dismissed means that he's probably is, going down a spiral. Is he officially dismissed? He was dismissed from the team, yeah. He's okay. dismissed from the team. It, and it's, uh, this means that he could potentially go down a very dark hole, and that means a very high potential that Zach Galifianakis can finally play him in a biopic. I am really have my fingers crossed Let's for write it. that and get those rights out. The right, the look, it's uncanny, the resemblance. Because he really does look like, at this point, a somewhat more handsome, like, more fit Zach should Galifianakis. We, should we do an alternate universe? Where it's actually where it's actually current age Zach Galifianakis is current it would be yes, that age yes, Matt Mock yes I'm all in so a all future in. fictional biopic I love it so that's we a made, new genre to make we're like yeah you could actually make the biopic before the person's even lived a life yeah yeah and then let them know like a cautionary tale what if the universe like what if Missouri put this together just to try to save his life just, just to, to be try like, we don't want you to go down this path you could look like this man. <laughs> but without the royalties from the Hangover trilogy. I'm not sure what his eligibility now is at this point. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he was a senior, right? He seems like he's been in college. Redshirt ever. junior. Wow. Yeah, I know. It feels like he's been around forever. But well, he, um, I mean, he can definitely go to. I would like. It'd be kind of fun to see him go the two way route and actually light it up. Yeah, to actually see him like go go do what Jeff Driscoll did. Yeah. Go to a smaller school, at, you know, Louisiana Tech, for Jeff Driscoll. and play really well, and then go to the Senior Bowl and play really well. Yeah, great for him. I yeah. love me some Jeff. Driscoll I still think now. Jeff Driscoll's probably a better player than Matty Mock, though. Yeah. I'll say that. Sure. I mean, he's I, at least I, got I, a quarterback's body. He was like six five. Yeah, I did. And then Jeff Driscoll, you know, he Jeff had Driscoll, five star God, prospect too. I do love. He was a good butt of a joke, though. During that one, oh yeah, season. great well, I mean, butt of jokes. <laughs> it's always fun when Florida sucks. It is. It's just hilarious to watch. Yeah, you're just like <laughs> maybe one day, like Alabama, Alabama will be really crappy, and then oh, like God. they could be the same thing. It's just like you know, you get tired of seeing the team be really good. Once they're human, I've never known a crappy Alabama. Like imagine, the, like imagine if the first team after Saban leaves is just terrible, just absolutely just down the drain. That would be. I think that would really shake things up in a major way, just for college football as a whole. Just to have, because imagine like, like a team that has been known so great. Like imagine just the Lakers in basketball, which I mean they're terrible now, but people still remember and they still have some like you know history. College football has a way of, like, removing the history if it's gone on long enough. Like, you just forget that these things happened, and you just – you get so caught up. Especially nowadays where the game has changed so much, recruiting has changed so much. For Alabama to no longer be any kind of power whatsoever, that's a huge vacuum, I feel like. And it, it can happen any year. Like, if Saban mm-hmm. really wanted to get a new job – because and you say you don't know a bad Alabama team. Alabama wasn't that great in the early 2000s. They weren't, like – They weren't bad, but they definitely weren't what they are now. But Mike Shula was their head coach, and they went four and nine in two thousand and three, like and that the, was his last man, season. It's so interesting, because I've you know I'm a fairly recent college football fan still. It's really, man, see that it'd be crazy. Brody Croyle was his last quarterback in two thousand four. <laughs> Brody Croyle for eternal Chiefs backup. Brody Croyle, <laughs> good guy, good guy, good guy, good cool bra, cool bra. Tyrone Prothrow, that's the dude who broke his leg. Disgustingly, but also caught the ball. Oh, he was like the first dude in the internet era to catch a ball on someone's back, like pin it against their back. <laughs> he was really good, but uh, yeah, he was not a good coach. Not a good coach. All right, bro. I think we we've given all the folks that they need to know about the F, about the I was about to say FXFL, about the MLFB. <laughs> this is gonna happen. Maybe, See, this is gonna happen. Maybe now. the MLFB could give us some like royalties. 
Yeah, just give us a holler. Yeah, give us, give a us some uh, compensation. A little, little scratch. A little scratch. We could be sideline reporters. We could be the Tony Siragusa of the MLFB together. To- <laughs> together. Two guys in one overcoat. <laughs> are you allowed? Are, uh, are you allowed to talk at all about your possible connection with Stevie G? Future connections? Uh, I, I'll just say that I'm going to attempt to do some kind of feature on Stevie G for Gamecock Central. We'll see if that happens. Um, just because I feel like. Especially if he's still tra- – I've seen that on Instagram that he's been training with Victor Hampton in Easley, South Carolina. Um, if they're still doing that, I would gladly take a drive to Easley, get some footy of him, and, you know, I, I would gladly help sell the MLFB name. Oh, absolutely. And Team Hall. I, I, just sell- want, I, can, I want them to have a team name. Uh, if they're going to be Team Hall the whole time, that's cool. And how great would it be if NFL teams just had to be the name of the coach? <laughs> um, and with like, all I'm saying is that their team name is going to stay Team Hall. They need a caricature logo. Absolutely. Get me a because because Galen Hall has a very bushy mustache. I bet. Get me a caricature of like Yosemite Sam with like a coaching headset on. Basically, just like a Team Hall mud flap. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'd be a hundred percent on board with that. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're always as glad as always to have you folks on board with us. Uh, we are, as always, we try to make these a little bit more regular, but you know, we always like to also ha- make sure we have stuff to actually talk about. You yeah, know? we want to make these one. interesting. It was a good, good time. Uh, random question. I'll throw this at you off the top of your head. Former South Carolina lineman, uh, either defensive or offensive, you'd like to have as a bodyguard. Ooh, that's a great question. It popped in my head earlier today. I'm like, I, I just think so many, so many good fat guys too. Dude, there's some good ones, man. Um, if Stanley Do- Doty's still around, um, I think it's actually it's pronounced Doughty, but Doty. Is <laughs> um, a recent, I was like Kelsey Quarles was the first dude that popped in mm. my head because he's got a real, he's got a real. Uh, you know, I want to change my answer, but Kelsey Quarles, he's got a bodyguard's body. Yeah. <laughs> um, super strong, but not cut. You know, <laughs> but I would do the tandem. Well, one O line, one D line. Kelsey Quarles, Mike Matulis. Boom! I love Mike it. Mike Matulis is my first choice, though. I love it because he. I'm sure that dude's fun. I think I'd go for the, the Dixon boys just for <sighs> just for the aesthetic of having twins, a la the replacements. The replacements, and I'm pretty sure they're not twins. They're not twins, but yeah, they're but they're, 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 bo- they're both they're, big, fat, they're both uh, bald, black. Gerald man, Dixon tough. is both. The senior is both their fathers yep. with different moms. Yep. And but they're still tight like twins. They have the twins. Connection. I say twins just because I can't help. It. Well, because like Cause they have the same name. <laughs> I think those dudes are just supposed to be twins in the replacement and look nothing like. And that yeah. one looks like five years older than the other guy. But <laughs> so I think that works. So it works. We'll call yeah. them twins. They're not twins. It works twins. out fine. Twins. One, two, twins. But yeah, have those two going going as bodyguards for me. I like that. That was a good answer. Right on, uh, folks. Have a wonderful week, month. Whenever we see you again, hopefully sooner than later. And as always, thank you for listening. He's Jeff Tyner. I'm Aaron Weiss. Uh, keep on clicking and clacking. Ooh, I like that. I like that too. I like that too. I like that too. I like that too. I like that too.